Hello and welcome to another episode of English Help Desk Live. Today we are going to be looking at idioms using the color blue. So, as you can see, I'm wearing a blue top. Yay! Um, aren't I clever? <laughs> so, the idioms that we will look at today are blue blood or to have blue blood, uh, blue color a blue collar worker or a blue collar job. We will also be looking at a or the blue eyed boy, a blue film or a blue movie, uh, a bolt from the blue, as well as the other idioms, once in a blue moon, out of the blue, scream blue murder or cry blue murder. And finally, we'll be looking at <clears throat> till one is blue in the face or a true blue. So in the last video, we talked about idioms with the color black. And when it came to black, many of those idioms have a very similar meaning because, well, black is very typically a negative color in the English language. However, with blue, uh, there's a lot more variation in the types of idioms or sayings or phrases that use the color blue. So let's have a look at our first one. Have blue blood or just blue blood? So what does this mean? Well, I'm not talking about someone being an alien. Of course, everybody has red blood. The color of blood is red. We all know that. But if we are talking about someone who has blue blood, then that person is someone who is royal or aristocratic in origin. Basically, we're talking about Queen Elizabeth II, Prince Philip, Prince Charles, Prince William, Prince Harry all of the members of the royal family. So, as an example of using blue blood, uh, if I'm related to the queen, then I have blue blood. So again, all the members of the royal family have blue blood, or at least in the idiom, they have blue blood. They have red blood, really but it's a way of showing how the royal family are different to most other members of society, more special than average people like myself. And yeah, if I was related to the queen, then I would be part of the royal family. So I could say that I have blue blood. Let's look at another example. Uh, oops. Uh, second example, I really wanted to have blue blood when I was young. So what this means is that as a child, I wanted to be part of the royal family. So yeah, I wanted to have blue blood instead of the common, normal, ordinary red blood that everyone else has. So to have blue blood means to be part of the royal family or a royal family. All right, let's move on. Let's have a look at our next idiom, <clears throat> which is a blue collar worker or a blue collar job. Now, I am wearing a blue collar today, but that does not mean that I am a blue collar worker. The choice of shirt was because of the topic of this video, not the type of job that I do. Uh, so a blue collar worker or yeah, a blue collar worker is basically a manual or factory worker. So someone who works in a factory or someone who uses their hands a lot uh, as part of their job. We could say that someone who works on a farm 
is a blue collar worker, someone who cleans uh, schools, you know, janitors are also blue collar workers because they use their hands a lot to do their job. As a teacher, I would not have a blue collar job. I would not be a blue collar worker. Someone who works in an office also is not a blue collar worker. So yeah, blue collar people who use their hands a lot or work in a factory. So let's have a look at an example of this idiom. I work at a factory during the university vacations. It's a blue collar job, but the money helps. So typically, people who study at university uh, go on to get well-paid jobs, maybe in business or in an office somewhere. And we call those types of people white-collar workers. But, uh, yeah, going to university is expensive. Everybody needs a little bit of help paying off the university fees. So this person works in a factory in order to get a little bit of extra money so that when they graduate from university, they can get a white collar job, a business job, an office job, or uh, a job that doesn't involve using the hands much. Another example, uh, blue collar workers need a lot of important skills. So just because someone works in a factory or works on a farm doesn't mean that they're stupid people. They need lots and lots of different skills in order to be able to do their job effectively. If you take a craftsperson, for example, a carpenter, someone who works with wood. Now, making a table or a chair that looks really nice requires a lot of skills. I know that if I were to try and make a table uh, using nothing but some tools and some wood, it would be awful. I can't even go to Ikea and using the instructions and the tools and the pre-made uh, things that they give me in Ikea, I can't even make a simple piece of furniture. So someone who is a carpenter who can make furniture out of wood, yeah, they have a lot of skills. So please don't think of blue collar workers as, yeah, not very intelligent people. All right, let's move on. Our next idiom is a blue-eyed boy or the blue-eyed boy. So here we have a bit of a sexist phrase, although these days I do hear more often a blue-eyed girl or a blue, the blue-eyed girl. So things are changing, but uh, yeah, let's have a look at what it actually means. So a man or boy or woman or girl uh, who is somebody's favorite and with whom he or she uh, can find no fault. So basically, a blue-eyed person is someone who everybody loves. Everything that they do seems to go really well. They seem to be very clever people and everybody just likes them and uh, think that everything that they do is of a very high standard. So let's have a look at an example. The teacher always gives him a good score. He's definitely the teacher's blue-eyed boy. So here, the student uh, is obviously the teacher's favorite. The teacher likes this student a lot. And hopefully, the good scores that the blue-eyed boy always gets, he deserves. Now, sometimes it does happen that a teacher will give good grades to someone that they like, even if they don't deserve those grades. Uh, but yeah, that would be a good example of a blue-eyed boy. The teacher really likes that student and gives good grades, even if sometimes, but hopefully usually, um, 
sorry, sometimes, but hopefully not very often, they don't deserve that score. Hopefully the student that we're talking about does deserve the scores. Okay, let's have a look at another example. Because she's skilled at sports and always gets good grades, she's the blue-eyed girl of the family. So again, the girl in person that we're talking about here, uh, yeah, everybody in the family loves them. They do very well at everything that they do, and the family is obviously very proud of that family member. So a blue-eyed boy or a blue-eyed girl is someone that everybody likes, or certainly one person really likes, and everything that they do seems to be very good quality, of very good quality. Okay, let's move on. A blue film or a blue movie. So, uh, what does this mean? Well, here we're getting into not so nice territory. Uh, a blue film or a blue movie is an obscene or pornographic film or movie. Basically, lots of people take off their clothes and do naughty, naughty things that children should not be watching. Uh, yeah, so a blue film. Movies with lots of sex and children should definitely not watch them. As an example, blue movies are banned in many countries. So, yeah, so movies that have lots of sex scenes or lots of nudity in them are banned in some countries. I know that in Korea, for example, yeah, uh, trying to find blue websites is illegal and you cannot find them if you go on the internet. My friend told me that, by the way. Uh, as another example, we were all horrified when Ted tried to show us a blue movie. So yeah, so Ted, in this example, tried to show a movie with lots of sex and everybody else in the room was horrified, did not want to watch them, and hopefully Ted felt very ashamed of himself. But Ted never feels shame. Never, ever. All right, let's move on. Let's have a look at our next idiom, which is a bolt from the blue. A bolt from the blue. So what this means is uh, a sudden, usually unpleasant surprise or shock. So something happens or we hear some news that we did not expect to happen and it takes us by shock. Very usually it's not something good, it's not something nice. And so when we hear that news or when that thing happens, yeah, we are shocked, we are surprised. And yeah, it's not usually a good thing. An example, his resignation came like a bolt from the blue. He loved his job. So here in this example, uh, somebody who really likes doing their job one day tells everybody that he doesn't want to do that job anymore. And it comes as a big surprise. Why? Why is this person, why is he leaving? If he loves his job, why does he want to resign? So it's a big shock and it's news that nobody was expecting and it's not very nice news for most of the people who hear it. A second example, the news of their breakup was a bolt from the blue. So again, here we're talking about a couple, a boyfriend and a girlfriend, who suddenly decide to split up and nobody was expecting it. It comes as a big surprise to everybody. 
pro uh, probably because everybody expected their relationship to last for a long time, if not forever. So when they decided to break up, everybody's shocked, everybody's surprised, and it's not good news for them. Okay, let's move on. Uh, our next idiom is once in a blue moon. Once in a blue moon. And this has the meaning of very rarely. So something that does not happen very often at all. And yeah, how often do you see the moon being blue? Almost never. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's something that really does not happen much, if at all. So let's have a look at an example of once in the blue moon. These days, I'm so busy that I can only meet friends once in a blue moon. So here in this example, the person speaking is not able to meet their friends very often at all. Maybe once a month, maybe once every two months, uh, maybe even once a year. Uh, but again, it's not a, a normal or usual thing that happens because they're so busy. They don't have time to go out and meet their friends. So yeah, they meet their friends once in a blue moon, not very often at all. Another example, my brother only ever calls me once in a blue moon. So here, uh, yeah, we all have families and sometimes families are not as close as other families. And although I might talk to my parents very often, uh, other family members I very rarely talk to, certainly not on the phone. So my brother only ever calls me once in a blue moon. Again, it could be once a year, once a decade. But yeah, the person and his brother almost never speak. They do, but just not very often. All right, let's have a look at our next idiom, which is out of the blue. Out of the blue, which has a very similar meaning uh, from a bolt from the blue. And yeah, as we can see, it has the definition of being sudden or unexpected. And very often we use out of the blue with the verbs um, I can't read, uh, argue, turn up, say, or ask. So yeah, we might say, he said out of the blue, they argued out of the blue, she asked out of the blue. And yeah, again, suddenly unexpected, it comes as a bit of a surprise to other people. Let's look at an example. Uh, Bill turned up out of the blue after days of nobody seeing him. So here, Bill is someone who can disappear for a long time. People might try and contact Bill, but he doesn't answer. People don't know where Bill is or what Bill is doing. So when Bill appears or turns up again, uh, it comes as a surprise to everybody. Hey, Bill, what are you doing here? Wow, this is a bolt out of the blue. Another example that we have is why she asked out of the blue. So again, we're using the phrase out of the blue with another verb, in this case, ask. So somebody might be talking, perhaps a teacher is talking and they don't expect students to say anything or ask any questions. So when a student suddenly says why, 
then the teacher is surprised, presumably because that student is very quiet, usually doesn't ask anything. So when the student does ask something, it comes out of the blue and is a surprise to the person talking. All right, let's move on. Uh, our next one is to scream blue murder or to cry blue murder. So, not some nice phrases uh, this in this lesson, but when we scream blue murder or if we cry blue murder, what it means is to shout loudly and emotionally in disagreement, protest or to make a lot of fuss. So typically when I hear this phrase, I think of young children screaming and shouting, daddy, 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 I want it, I want it now, now, now. And the child doesn't stop until the parents give in and do what the child wants. But we don't just use it for children, we can use it for adults as well. As an example, if my boss doesn't give me a promotion, I will scream blue murder. So here we're using the phrase more for protest. The worker wants a promotion. They want to rise higher in their company and get more money. And if the boss doesn't give the promotion, if the boss doesn't allow the worker to do that, then that worker is going to protest and just keep shouting and screaming and yelling and whatever until. Uh, the worker gets a promotion, or they get fired, sacked from their job. Our second example, uh, the child screamed blue murder until she got the toy she wanted. So this goes back to what I was saying earlier. I know that I have some friends with young children who, if they are in a shop or particularly a toy shop, the child wants something and just yells and screams and shouts and shouts until the parents give in and give the child that toy. The next phrase is, till one is blue in the face. So what does this mean? It means continuously or exhaustively, but without results. And again, this is a phrase that we often use with verbs, such as talk or argue. We can also use uh, this phrase, till one is blue in the face, with our previous idiom, scream blue murder. The child screamed blue murder until she was blue in the face, but she did not get the toy that she wanted. So as I said, it's when you talk or you argue and you seem to be doing that for a long, long time, almost until you're out of breath and the blood drains and your face goes blue. And yeah, but there's never a result. You can talk or shout or argue for a long time, but nothing happens as a result of the things that you are saying. So let's have a look at an example. I argued with my husband until I was blue in the face, but he just wouldn't listen to me. So here the wife wants the husband to do something and it's got to the point of arguing, but the husband just refuses to do what the wife is saying, even though she's been arguing and shouting or uh, speaking for a very, very long time. Another example was, I told him until I was blue in the face that he couldn't smoke here, but he still did. So in this example, the other person, the person smoking, is being very rude. And 
the first person is saying, don't smoke. You cannot smoke here. Smoking's bad. This is not a place you can smoke. Don't smoke. Don't smoke. Don't smoke. And their face turns blue because they're talking so much. But the other person just goes, whatever. <sighs> and continues to smoke anyway. So until one is blue in the face, to talk or argue for a long time, but without any results. All right, so we move on to our final idiom of today, which is a true blue. So a true blue has a couple of slightly different meanings, depending on if you're in Britain or in America. So in America, a true blue is someone who is very loyal, but being British, I'm going to talk about the British meaning of a true blue, which is to be a loyal conservative with traditional views and values. So if you know anything about British politics, you'll know that there are two major parties. You have the Conservative Party or Tory Party, and you also have the Labour Party as well. There's a few other smaller parties, but at least at the moment in British politics, Conservatives and Labour are the two biggest uh, parties. Now, in Britain, if you're conservative, uh, the Conservative Party is represented by the colour blue, whereas Labour is represented by the colour red. And Conservatives are very conservative by nature, whereas Labour traditionally thinks more about the working people. In America, the, the colours are swapped. So you have the Republican army, who is more conservative, but goes with the colour red. And then the Democrats, who typically think more about the working people, who go by the colour blue. But in Britain, conservatives are blue, Labour is red, and somebody who is a strong conservative supporter or has very traditional values, uh, we call them a true blue. Let's look at an example. So Boris Johnson is definitely a true blue. Now, Boris Johnson is the current Prime Minister of the UK. And yeah, he was the leader of the Conservative Party. But he's only just recently uh, stepped into politics in the last 10 years or 15 years. Uh, before that, he was the editor of a conservative newspaper, and most of his family have been strong conservative supporters all their life. In fact, his family are quite rich, and he went to a very, the richest school in the UK, Eton, and got to know, uh, went to school with a lot of the former uh, uh, conservative leaders or big players in the Conservative Party. So basically, Boris Johnson has always been around conservative people, uh, has always been a supporter of a conservative party, joined the conservative party, became the leader and now prime minister of the conservative party. So I can definitely say Boris Johnson is a true blue, a strong and loyal supporter of the Conservative Party with very traditional views. Let's move on to another example. Philip will, Philip will only ever vote for the Tory party because he is such a true blue. So again, Philip in this example, although not a member of the Conservative Party, is someone who has always voted for the Conservative Party and almost certainly will for the rest of his life. 
So Philip here is a true blue. Okay, so that was our last idiom. So what we're going to do now is to have a review. Basically, I'm going to go through each of these idioms one more time. And before I show you what the idioms mean, I want to see if you can remember the meaning of each of the idioms that I talked about. So are you ready? Okay, so the first one was to have blue blood. Blue blood, have blue blood. What does this mean? Well, the meaning of blue blood is to be royal or aristocratic in origin. So a part or a member of the royal family. They don't actually have blue blood, it's just a metaphor to show that they are more special than everybody else. Okay, a blue collar worker or a blue collar job. What does this mean? A blue collar worker, a blue collar job. So if you're a blue collar worker, well, you're basically the opposite of being a member of the royal family. If you are a blue collar worker, you are someone who works in a manual job or you are a factory worker. Someone who uses their hands a lot in their job um, or yeah, works in a factory, works in a farm or another kind of craftsperson like a carpenter. <clears throat> V or A, blue-eyed boy or girl, we're not going to be discriminatory here, a blue-eyed boy, a blue-eyed girl, what does this mean? So if you are a blue-eyed boy or girl, then you are someone who is somebody else's favourite and with whom they can find no fault. So yeah, you're the golden child, to use a similar phrase. You're the person that everybody likes, or at least one other person really, really likes. And yeah, very often you're clever or talented, and everything that you do seems to be liked and approved by other people. Okay, a blue film, a blue movie. What is the meaning of this? So a blue film or a blue movie is an obscene or pornographic film or movie. A movie or film with lots of sex and lots of nudity and young children, any children should definitely not watch that kind of film. A bolt from the blue. What did this mean? A bolt from the blue. Okay, so a bolt from the blue had the meaning of a sudden surprise or shock and usually a very unpleasant surprise or shock that nobody was expecting. So yeah, uh, news or something bad that happens that nobody expected, but comes as a big surprise or a big shock. Once in a blue moon. Once in a blue moon. What does this mean? Okay, so once in a blue moon has the meaning of very rarely something that does not happen very often. For example, English Help Desk used to post videos once in a blue moon. English Help Desk almost never uh, released videos, although now I am starting to much, much more often. Out of the blue, what does out of the blue mean? 
Out of the blue uh, has a similar meaning to a bolt from the blue, which is to be uh, sudden, unexpected, and we very often use it with the verbs appear, turn up, say, or ask. So, a new video from English Help Desk appears out of the view, out of the blue, once in a blue moon. <clears throat> Scream or cry blue murder. Scream blue murder, cry blue murder. What does this mean? So when you scream blue murder, uh, which is an informal phrase, you are shouting loudly and emotionally in disagreement, or you're shouting in protest, or you're just making a lot of fuss. You're making a lot of noise until, hopefully, you get the thing that you want. Till one is blue in the face. Till until one is blue in the face. What does this mean? <clears throat> so, till one is blue in the face has the meaning of continuously or exhaustively, but without results. And again, we often use this with verbs such as talk or argue. So I can talk to you until I am blue in the face, but if you're not listening, then my talking achieves absolutely nothing. And finally, a true blue. What does a true blue mean? So a true blue in America means someone who is very loyal, but in Britain, a true blue is a loyal conservative with traditional views and values. So they like the Conservative Party in the UK and typically have traditional views, traditional values represented by the Conservative Party. So I'm going to finish in just a moment, but I want you to practice. Write down these sentences using the idioms and comment below if you think your sentences are good enough. Studying alone is good, but studying with other people is even better. So share the sentences that you write down with other people to show how good you are and possibly even get a conversation started. Again, the best way to remember this is to use the things that you have learned. Don't let the idioms disappear. Write them down, practice, use them as often as you can. And one way to do that is by commenting down below. And finally, subscribe. There will be more real videos coming very soon. I've got a new episode of Weird But True News coming in the next day or so, as well as the new series about how to have a discussion uh, coming up at the end of the week, hopefully. So subscribe and turn on that notification bell so that you know when those videos appear. And let others know about me as well. Again, English is a good thing to learn, but if you don't use English, then, yeah, it, there's no point in learning English. English is a social language. So if you tell others about me, then they will be under they will be able to understand all the things that you talk to them about when you use these idioms. All right, thank you very much. I'm going to finish here. Have a good day. I'll be back in a couple of days. Until then, bye-bye.